BuzzFeed, once the new kid on the media blocks, now unbelievably a teenager launched 13 years ago, it was supposed to break the mould of the way news worked, was one of the first companies to harness the power of social media to distribute content. It grew into a global giant, taking on the so-called legacy media with big investments in original journalism and controversial scoops like the publication of the Steele dossier on Donald Trump, P-gate to you and me. However, they soon found that monetizing quality journalism was as difficult for them as it has been for traditional news outlets over the last two years. They've cut 15% of their staff, including the entire news desk. The soaring of public attitudes to tech platforms like Facebook and Google have led its CEO, Jonah Peretti, to call for a sea change in the way content's created and shared online. And Jonah Peretti's in London uh, with us tonight. Nice of you to come in. You've had quite a journey. and I know your audience will be divided by those who think, you know, BuzzFeed's the cat gif and those who think... BuzzFeed's the Steele dossier uh, on the Moscow hotel room with Trump. Is it a different beast now to the one that you conceived? Yeah, we, I mean, our success has been driven by continually changing and evolving. Um, and uh, you, we didn't cut our entire news desk. We cut what, a, a national uh, desk. We still have 100 plus uh, reporters um, and more around the world. Uh, news is uh, incredibly important to us. We're very, very committed to news. It is true that news is a harder uh, business than entertainment or lifestyle media. So, you know, where we'll see a lot of profits in things like the lists and quizzes um, on the BuzzFeed website uh, or Tasty, which is our food brand. Um, news is, is one where getting to sustainability is harder because it, it costs a lot to invest in the kind of work you need to do to do quality journalism. But because what you were trying to do and what I was explaining was almost harness yourself to the big tech companies, to, to work symbiotically with them so they took your content and they turned around and said, we don't need it, we don't need to pay for your stuff, we can do our own, we can run our own gifts. Yeah, it, they, haven't, they haven't said we don't need it, uh, it's just taken longer than, than, we, than we'd like. So last year uh, we had over $80 million in revenue just from the big uh, for tech platforms, um, and that's up 12x uh, over a five-year period. So it's growing very quickly. It's still not enough to sustain the ambition we have for, for our news team and for all of the, the the content we want we want to make. Um, but it's starting to happen. I think the platforms are realizing that if they just have user-generated content and fake news and anything that anyone can upload and nothing being tested, well, they're going to have a lot of problems. And they're but seeing they are those having problems. problems. It doesn't stop the clickbait stuff, which, you know, you energize and you prioritize as being the most easily accessible viral stuff. I mean, that was what you were about. You wanted things to go viral and now the wrong stuff is going viral. The anti-vax stuff's going viral. The fake news is going viral. I wonder if yeah, I, that's I, come back to haunt you. I think a few years ago, the things that went viral were hopeful and joyful. Uh, things like a dress that looks like different colors right. to different people or an exploding watermelon or kitten videos or gifts um, and also really great scoops and great reporting would also is also something that goes viral when you expose something that people didn't didn't want to know uh, or, or that powerful people didn't want you know, the public to know that is also something that can go viral I think what's happened more recently is that internet trolls um, political operatives foreign governments have all started to realize that they can try to use these same mechanisms to make things go viral of course. and when they do that um, it can have really dangerous effects for society it's out of control now though isn't it I mean the big platforms have to fundamentally change if they're not going to just keep spreading stuff that is poison and lies. They, they don't think of it as them spreading it. They think of they're an open platform and people upload think? stuff. I, I think that right now the big platforms are spending a huge amount of money on trying to get the bad stuff off the platform. They're hiring tens of thousands of moderators. It's literally billions of dollars being spent to try to get bad stuff off the platforms. And I don't think you ever will win with that approach. There's just so much content being uploaded at all so times. So they shouldn't become editors. They shouldn't try and take on a more responsible role for what appears on their platforms? I think they should. I think that they're taking the approach right now of moderating the bad stuff. They need to also figure out how to support the good stuff. And that means, you know, in our case, the, the, the 80 million in revenue last year mm -hmm. that I mentioned, that's a start, for, you know, where you can start to sustain good, good production. But it needs to be a lot more than that, not just for us, but for all uh, media, media companies. But does the fact that you've had to cut so many journalists and, and news staff tell you that the appetite for the news that you do is, is never going to travel as much as, as the, you know, the clickable stuff? I think that we um, unfortunately made cuts across BuzzFeed. It wasn't just to our news department. In fact, the news department was the place where we were most reluctant to cut because of the important mission of that of that group. 
Um, I think overall, digital media needs to get to a point of sustainability, and we're getting closer to that. We got a little ahead of ourselves. We invested more uh, ahead of when the platforms were really ready for it, and now we're seeing this, um, to th th that balance come, come back. And so um, we are on a path to profitability. We don't um, have any need to raise additional capital. Um, we are really building the sustainable model for digital media and reaching hundreds of millions of people and having a big impact on, on the world at the same time. Jennifer, thank you. Thanks thank you.